Do you love video games? Do you love crypto? Well, you might want to listen up. Today, I want to talk about a project that has the potential to bring millions of new people into crypto, while offering some pretty unique investment opportunities to boot. So, what project am I talking about? Well, that would be the Sandbox and its virtual universe, where people come for all the things they can do, but stay for all the things they can be. Yes, I rehearsed that line from one of my favourite films. I'm Guy, and in this video I'll be taking a closer look at the Sandbox, the use cases for the Sand token, and its tokenomics. I'll also explore how you could profit from becoming a digital real estate mogul. So, be sure to stick around. Before I get going, there are a few things I need to say. Don't let my swagger fool you, I am no financial advisor. Sorry about that one. That means this video is for educational purposes only. So, be sure to check in with your actual financial guy before making any moves. If you've stumbled across my channel for the first time, then welcome to the Bureau. Some say I'm a bit of a recluse. However, the truth is that I spend all day and all night in the Coin Bureau lab to research and bring you these coin overviews and other handy crypto guides. So, if that's something you can get value from, then be sure to join Team Coin Bureau by smashing that subscribe button and flicking on all those notifications. Do that and you'll forever be drinking from the fountain of knowledge. Finally, your time is valuable, so I've provided some useful timestamps below. You can use them to jump ahead to the sections of my analysis that interest you. Ready Player One? Suit up and pop that VR headset on. So, what the heck is The Sandbox? Well, for those that don't know, it's actually a wildly popular franchise where players can build their own virtual worlds. The franchise has actually been around on iOS and Android since 2012. So, how popular is this game, you might ask? Well, this non-crypto version of The Sandbox has 40 million downloads and over 70 million worlds have been created. So, pretty popular if you ask me. That means that The Sandbox already has a massive community and explains why the blockchain iteration of the game has been one of the most widely anticipated in crypto. The game's latest version takes the form of a virtual world where players can build, own, and monetize their gaming experiences on the Ethereum blockchain using Sand, the game's utility token. In a nutshell, the game is all about creating an immersive metaverse where players create virtual worlds and games collectively and without a central authority. Another really cool thing about it is that the team at the Sandbox aim to give control of the game eventually to users. And that's all done by making the game a decentralized, autonomous organization. Now, I know many of you think that virtual worlds are not that big a deal. However, you would be dead wrong. These creator games with voxel graphics are dominated by Minecraft and Roblox. Minecraft has over 126 million active players. Now, it seems that Microsoft saw the potential of the Minecraft franchise way back in 2014 and forked out a staggering $2.5 billion to acquire it. Roblox, on the other hand, has about 100 million active users and raised a whopping $150 million this year at a $4 billion valuation. So yes, games all about building virtual worlds are damn popular and are super valuable. So that begs the question, why would anyone switch from playing Minecraft or Roblox to the Sandbox? Well, to answer that, we need to look at the shortcomings of the traditional gaming market. The first problem is the centralization of user-generated content in titles like Roblox. This basically limits creator rights and ownership. Now, that's just a fancy way of saying that if you create an item in one of these games, the gaming company owns it and not you. The second problem is that there is central control over the trading of virtual goods created by players. This restricts players from achieving fair valuations for their creations, as the gaming companies end up taking a big cut of any sales. Also, some items can be prevented from being traded at all. Another issue is that voxel art lends itself to being copied, altered, or built on top of. That means it can be super difficult to prove who actually owned the original creation. 
That's pretty bad news when it comes to creatives being fairly compensated for their work. And finally, existing game marketplaces are based on fiat currencies, which don't support microtransactions and are pretty damn vulnerable to credit card fraud that could unbalance in-game economies. The Sandbox aims to solve all these shortcomings through the adoption of blockchain. That's done through the creation of a voxel gaming platform where creators are able to craft, play, share, collect and trade without centralized control. All while enjoying significantly better copyright ownership. That ownership is established and guaranteed by using NFTs, where every in-game item has a unique and immutable blockchain ID. Oh yes, those in-game microtransactions are of course done using SAND, those Sandbox's native cryptocurrency. So, all that begs the question, what makes up the Sandbox ecosystem? Essentially, it can be broken down into three core components. The first is VoxEdit, which is a simple yet powerful 3D voxel modeling package. This allows users to create and animate 3D items and objects like people, tools and items and export them into the Sandbox marketplace to become in-game assets. That's potentially interesting news for the 40,000 digital asset creators that are earning up to $122,000 a year just by making items for Second Life, Decentraland Furniture and other in-game items. Then you have the Sandbox Marketplace, which allows users to upload, publish and sell their creations made using VoxEdit, as both ERC721 and ERC1155 tokens. Of course, players who want those unique items can peruse this shop to find and buy those cool in-game assets. The third and final component of the ecosystem is the Game Maker and Game itself. Game Maker mode allows anyone who owns Sandbox assets to place them within a piece of land. I'll get onto that in a bit more detail shortly. What this allows players to do is to create experiences in the lands they own and enjoy them in regular game mode. I now want to move on to look at lands and explain why you might want to invest in them. Let's dive in, shall we? Lands are pieces of digital real estate within the Sandbox metaverse that players can buy to build experiences on top of. That means you can populate them with in-game assets to create unique gaming experiences. The important thing to note is that each land is an NFT that lives on the Ethereum public blockchain. So, yep, they are tradable and you have custody over them. These Sandbox lands also have a cap supply of around 166,000 and together make up the map that makes up the Sandbox metaverse. You can see that the likes of Atari have bought up a ton of in-game real estate. When it comes to lands, there are three types within the Sandbox. The first is just a standard land, which is the basic Sandbox unit and comprises a 96 by 96 meter square in the in-game world. Then you have estates, which are a combination of multiple lands. And finally, you have land districts, which are when an estate is owned by several players. Owners of districts benefit from special governance rules and they allow several players to collaborate together to build a shared vision. To convert an estate into a district, the following criteria must be met. Lands must be next to each other. There must be a minimum of two owners. Each owner must stake a certain amount of sand. The district must be approved by a vote. But all this begs the question, what the heck can you do with them? Well, they act as creative tickets that enable you to create any world you can imagine and populate it with assets. You can bring that space to life, play in it or just hang out with friends. Yes, I know that's very Ready Player One. Lands also allow you to monetize by charging other players sand tokens to visit your land, to play the games you have built or bought, and to potentially sell your land for a profit after you have customized it. Ownership of lands also grants you a say in the governance of the sandbox. So, owning a plot or two will allow you to have your say in the future of the platform. And finally, you can actually host events on your land and get rewarded for that too. What this means is that there is an incentive to own estates or districts. Big districts could act as natural hotspots within the metaverse, which can be used for grand building projects to acquire a ton of player traffic. Essentially, by pooling resources and collaborating, 
you could well end up creating and owning a wonder of the sandbox world. So, these digital bits of real estate allow you to act like a real-life member of the landed gentry. That brings me smoothly on to the very important topic of why you might invest in sandbox lands. Getting your hands on these assets allows you to build your own in-game world in your own style or flavour. They are your property forever and are finite commodities. So, the laws of supply and demand come into play here. However, what buying a land early does is give you the opportunity to secure a top-notch location first. As any real estate agent will tell you, real estate value is all about location, location, location. Getting in early also allows you to develop your land first and have the opportunity to enjoy first mover advantage when it comes to building experiences. So, there might be a few people out there that are like me and love crazy golf. I might decide to develop my land to create a crazy golf course with the idea of charging people to play there. That first mover advantage may make or break that virtual golf course and actually enable me to earn a revenue stream. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. Another way you can monetize your lands is by renting them. You can actually earn passive income by renting those land assets to game makers and allowing them to use them. That means you can make money from your asset without going through the hassle of developing your land yourself. Game creators, on the other hand, can publish and monetize their games on rented lands and earn a profit from that. So, lands allow you to get involved in gameplay, host games and experiences on your land, monetize your land via gameplay hosting or renting your land. Oh, and of course, organizing events on your property. Now, I know what you're thinking. Land sounds pretty cool, but how much do they cost? Well, the way land pricing works is that there is a base price of $48 per land, and these prices are fixed until all 160,000 lands are sold. However, discounts are available on a sliding scale, with the first pre-sale round attracting the biggest discount of 40%. The most recent fourth round pre-sale attracted a 10% discount off that base price of $48 per land. In case you're interested, you can see a full breakdown of these pre-sale rounds and pricing right here. Now, I'm sure that those of you with a Costco card know that when you buy in bulk, you get a discount. Well, the same is true when you buy estates. Buy a large estate made up of 144 land parcels and you'll get a compounded discount of 15%. Oh yes, one more thing to know is that there is already an active secondary market for lands on NFT marketplaces like OpenSea. So, that means these land assets are already tradable and you might be able to potentially flip them for a profit. I now want to briefly move on to speak a bit about how you could profit from in-game assets. Let's slide into that now. So, different in-game assets have different levels of rarity. Take this Earth Golem, for example. There are literally only two copies available. So, that means that if I corner the Earth Golem market and people have to have that monster, then I could be quids in here. With all that said, the sandbox is still in close alpha, so it's not like people are going to be flipping in-game items for big money anytime soon. But this is just something to bear in mind and keep your eye on. Anyways, the easiest way to invest in the sandbox right now has to be those sand tokens. So, I now want to take a further look into their tokenomics and use cases. Sand is the utility token used throughout the sandbox ecosystem and has three main use cases. The first is acting as a medium of exchange to buy that item in the sandbox marketplace, to rent lands off other players, and to pay for in-game experiences, like my future crazy golf course. Creators can spend land to acquire assets to pimp their lands, and artists spend sand to upload their creations to the sandbox marketplace and to buy gems to define the item's rarity. The second use case is governance, which enables holders to participate in governance decisions. Sand holders can either vote themselves or delegate their voting rights to a player of their choice. Finally, you can stake sand to earn more. This doesn't work like staking a regular cryptocurrency, so I'd better get into that. In short, there are two phases of staking. The first is already active and involves liquidity mining. Essentially, by staking sand right now, you're adding it to the Uniswap liquidity pool. The cool thing is that the Sandbox team is putting up 1.5 million sand per month to be distributed as rewards, which are distributed pro rata to the holder's percentage of the total liquidity pool, 
over the course of a one-month period. This liquidity mining trial is set to end at the end of October, and the results will then be assessed by the team. The second phase of staking is not live yet. However, the team are looking to introduce yield multipliers based on land NFT ownership. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Another thing that will impact on future staking rewards for SAND tokens is that 5% of all transaction volume carried out in SAND tokens is charged as a transaction fee. 50% of that fee will be allocated to the staking pool and the other 50% to the Sandbox Foundation. That means that as the velocity of sand increases as an in-game currency, so will the staking rewards. An important thing to note is that the max supply of sand is 3 billion tokens, with a current circulating supply of just under 600 million. That means that just over 20% of the entire supply is circulating right now. So, that means that SAND token holders can expect to see additional supply hitting the market in the future. That being said, it isn't until June 2021 that a major increase in supply will be released. You can see the SAND release schedule right here. Despite these supply factors though, there are demand drivers for the SAND token on the horizon, and that would be the public land sale. Here, Nearly 77,000 lands will be sold at an average land price of $48. After getting out my calculator, that works out at around $3.5 million in land sales, provided that the public sale sells out. Recently, the Sandbox completed pre-sale 4.2, and that was the first official pre-sale to only accept the Sand token as the way to buy lands. My point here is that it doesn't seem outlandish to think that the land public sale could exclusively use the Sand token and that would mean an additional $3.5 million in demand for the token in the near future. Of course, as the Sandbox game attracts more players and creators, this should lead to an increased need for sand within the ecosystem. As the token supply is fixed, there should be scarcity as the amount of sand per person decreases and drives up demand. Now, I don't think you really need to be a rocket scientist to know that fixed supply and increasing demand should lead to higher prices. How many players could the Sandbox acquire? Well, if the game successfully cannibalized just 1% of the player base from Minecraft and Roblox, then that would be over 2 million gamers right there. Needless to say, if that came to pass, then it would probably be very good news for the demand for Sand tokens and their price. But all that hinges on the success of the game. Put very simply, if no one plays the game, then Sand tokens frankly have no value at all. I know what you're thinking. What about the investment case for lands? Well, let's investigate, shall we? With land investments, you should be aware that they won't be anywhere near as liquid as the SAND token. After all, you cannot just pop onto an exchange to market and sell one of these assets on Binance. An important thing to know is that when land is traded, that all its contents and assets are included in the trade. So one strategy might be to develop lands, as you would do up a house and flip it for a profit. A bit like what some property developers do. It is true that lands have a cap supply of about 167,000. However, only about 124,000 of them are available for public sale. 15.5% of all lands will form a reserve, which is earmarked to be distributed to value adders like partners, creators, and to gamers as promotion rewards. Around 10% of the remaining lands will remain owned by the Sandbox team who will use them to host special events and feature exclusive in-game assets. What all that means is that lands are more scarce than the supply cap would suggest. Even if just 0.1% of the players from Minecraft and Roblox moved over to the Sandbox, that would be over 200,000 players, which basically means that there wouldn't be enough lands available for every player to have one. So yes, the value of lands is inextricably linked to the popularity of the game. Does Sandbox have any strategies to increase this popularity? Well, let's take a quick look at what they have coming up in the pipeline. Now, I need to be clear that the Sandbox is currently in closed alpha. There are a bunch of releases on the horizon, such as Game Maker version 0.35. They're also eyeing the introduction of avatars, which will give you the ability to select a preset model from a list and play in-game. Of course, Future updates will allow you to further customize your avatars with different body parts and accessories. On top of that, multipliers should be coming soon too. 
One of the key challenges for the game is the rate of adoption among the community of artists and creators to actually create sandbox assets for users to buy and exchange. After all, these in-game assets are a key demand driver for sand, and without them, it's going to be hard for people to customize their lands. OK team, this video is getting long. However, I do want to share my closing thoughts on the sandbox. Honestly, I was shocked to find out how popular the sandbox franchise was on iOS and Android. It's that community of creators which should be Sandbox's secret weapon. After all, user-generated virtual worlds need a ton of content and items to make them interesting for players. Those in-game assets are also key to driving demand for the Sand token and developing those lands into imaginary worlds. When it comes to investing in the Sand token, lands, or any in-game asset, you are essentially making a bet on the success of the game. The truth is that all those assets will likely be worth very little if hardly anyone is playing the game. That being said, the upside here is enormous, with hundreds of millions of people playing these types of virtual world-building games. If just a small fraction of those players move over to the sandbox, then that would see potentially millions of new users being thrust into the crypto ecosystem. If that came to pass, then undoubtedly lands and sand tokens would be super valuable. Will the sandbox be wildly popular? I don't know. But what I do see here is an asymmetric bet that has massive upside potential. Personally, I may decide to buy myself some land in order to supplement my NFT portfolio. So if you're signed up to my weekly newsletter, then I will let you know about any land purchases I make there. And if you're not signed up yet, then what are you waiting for? This is my once weekly take on everything crypto, news, reviews, and market analysis. It's also where I share a comprehensive breakdown of my personal portfolio. So yes, it's well worth your while. The link to that rocket ship of crypto knowledge is in the description below. And that is it, folks. My overview of the sandbox. I've done enough talking, and it's now time to hear your thoughts. So what do you think of the sandbox? And do you think it's got potential? Use those comments below. Oh yes, if you're a crypto trader, then I have some news for you. I've set up my own trading competition and I'm giving away thousands of dollars in USDT every month. On top of that, I've been able to secure you good people an exclusive sign-up bonus and trading fee discount. So if that sounds interesting, then be sure to check out my link below. Now, finally, if you think this young whippersnapper has done a good job, then be sure to hit that like button. If you would like to see more videos from me, then you can make that happen by subscribing.